Welcome back to the channel guys and in today's video we are going to feature a double ice team consisting of Frostlass and Shadow Obama Snow and I think FP6 also featured this team which I really liked and I felt it's really strong so I tried it and uh, I tried playing one set with it and it went really well so if if it had not been uh, for a big misplay I think I would have gotten 5 and 0 so this set is going to be a 4-in-1 set nevertheless but it's it's a pretty strong team in my opinion and definitely a must try so i also happened to play my 10,000 gbl battle uh, today so i included that battle because it's not a big deal but it's still something so i hope you enjoy the video today and if you do uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button we just crossed the 500 milestone and the next one would be of of a thousand subscribers so help us reach that goal and if you want to join the battle set discord server the link to that is in the description down below so moving on to the team composition the team which we are using today as i mentioned consisting consist of uh, swampert frostlass and shadow obama snow so basically it's a abb line and you if you manage to draw out uh, a, a rock type or a fire type user i think obama snow can really uh, can really help in the back and uh, we really came back in from a lot of uh, from some lost leads so so yeah it will be exciting to watch and as far as pv poke rating go this team doesn't really do well because probably because it's a abb line but frostlass with uh, with energy advantage can be really a handy pokemon to use so i'll be uh, going through uh, that set and without further delays let's start with the battles to see how the battle goes so picking up a positive lead in the form of this talent flame and the opponent is staying in and uh, the opponent really does a great job in taking on the hydro cannon onto the azumarill i was not really uh, to be honest i was not really prepared for a sack so because this was literally my first battle of the day but um, the uh, i do have a decent answer to that uh, to that azumarill and at this point i really don't want a lot of energy uh, left or a lot of health left on my above snow because i know the talent flame will come in and uh, just simply farm down so uh, that's why i farmed a lot of extra energy and went for energy ball this knocks out the azumarill but definitely the talent flame is coming back in so so yeah uh, just waiting for it to come back in so incinerate goes through unfortunately and uh, the weather ball will not do a, does decent amount of damage puts it in uh, puts it in yellow but we do have the yeah the swamp bird is basically uh, going down pretty fast uh, if it's a brave bird but they managed to bait a flame charge so not really good and really well played from my opponent because he uh, because they always they again managed to uh, call, catch a hydro cannon onto the grass type which is not really good so even though now i have uh, now i'm left with uh, with frost slash which is a decent counter to meganium but uh, since they have loaded energy onto the talent flame plus uh, the talent flame will uh, will be farming down the uh, the frost slash it's not really looking good for us so uh, they do not shield the avalanche obviously because yeah why would they do that and they have a free reign uh, because now uh, i am shieldless and the flame charge will knock out the yeah there was no way i was coming back from it and really well played from my opponent kudos to them for uh, uh, for getting these axe ops on point so i, I learned from my mistake uh, so i i'm not fa ex farming extra uh, or not throwing right away this time around probably uh yeah it probably would not have mattered because there is an obstacle coming in so they shield the charge attack and now i swap into frostless because now i think uh we can uh, we can win this uh, win this matchup so they go for a night slash so no need to shield the first night slash but unfortunately they get the boost the first time itself so not really good because counter damage will now eventually add up uh, they do not shield the av avalanche which does massive amount of damage uh, and at this point i shield because i was confident enough that i would be able to get to another uh, another avalanche or will be able to potentially farm it down and i really needed the switch advantage because uh, because abamusnu is really going to struggle up against that alolan marowak so uh, hence i i throw because uh, even if they shield uh, we i think we will be able to farm down the uh, obstacle but fortunately they do not shield and gave up the switch advantage right right there so now i can come in with a uh, now i can come in with swampert and again getting caught up in the sack so kind of thing and they take the hydro cannon onto the lantern but this is still okay because now i can i farm all the way up to another hydro cannon because i knew that uh, alolan marowak had some loaded energy at their end 
so thunderbolt hydro pump both would be resisted so uh, so yeah that was another reason that i did not shield it the uh, that i farmed a lot of energy of the um of the swampert so uh, farming a lot of energy but unfortunately they do not shield this charge mode they do not shield the weather ball and uh, this uh, even thunderbolt hydro pump uh, whichever it is would be able to knock out the shadow of our snow and now i my basic goal is charge all the way up to two hydro cannons which we do and fortunately the um the the lantern was not able to get to a charge move so going for a hydro cannon this will most likely grab the shield of the alolan marowak we do have another hydro cannon all uh, ready and swampert with energy i think is pretty dangerous so the hydro cannon does not knock the alolan marowak out and this is just if it's a shadow ball it's going to knock out but not the shadow bone at this range so we don't go down and uh, mud shots are able to take that alolan marowak out so so yeah even though the opponent lost lost the lead they did really play well uh, moving on to the next one picking up a skarmory lead so this is a pretty neutral matchup and uh, they somehow gave the switch advantage uh, in this in this game but this is okay because now uh, the azumarill is paired up against the against the abama snow so this is really good situation for us so i count the bubbles and throw right before uh, they get to an ice beam so going for an energy ball since there was no point in going for a bait so going for an energy ball they they do not shield that and the energy ball is barely not able to take down the azumarill so going for a weather ball this will definitely knock the azumarill out because i really wanted to keep this maintain the switch advantage there and let's see they come back in with skarmory so skarmory again uh, will take a lot of damage from uh, the weather ball because it's a it's come one is coming from a shadow and uh, to its neutral it puts the skarmory into a, a probably in the hydro cannon range and now they swap into swampert of their own and i immediately so not immediately but i swap into frostlass now frostlass can survive one hydro cannon but i invest a shield earlier on earlier on because i don't want swampert to farm down this uh, this frostlass whereas now uh, the avalanche will <coughs> will be pressuring uh, the shields at the swampert's end so swampert yeah i, I think i let the let go of this one the hydro cannon barely uh, we we are not going down with one hydro cannon but swampert will be farming a lot of an energy but in this case uh, we will be pressuring the last shield of the swampert which is really good because uh, because skarmory is in hydro cannon range so at this point i really all i need to do is uh not shield this one because if i shield this one this skarmory can go for brave bird and knock us out whereas now uh, yeah now the skarmory will need to uh, get to two sky attacks which is probably not possible since we are up a shield and the skarmory is in hydro cannon range so so yeah th that's pretty much was the strategy they go for a brave bird so this is this is pretty much game because now uh with the defense debuff this is surely going to kill uh kill this skarmory so so yeah ggs moving on to the next one let's see what do we get and we are in a medicham lead so not a good lead for swamp bird because if it's a power power up punch the medicham will be boosted a lot by the time it's done with the swamp bird so hence i swap into frost slash and uh, the opponent uh, was the opponent took a bit of time to swap so this allows frost slash to uh, get ahead on energy and avalanche will do a lot of damage especially because it's uh, it's neutral onto galarian stun fisk and this will either knock out the stun fisk or grab the la uh, grab the first shield so the opponent invest shield so we can survive one rock slide and let's see if i decide to invest a shield i don't invest a shield which is probably the smart move to um, smart move uh, but now they go for another rock slide and now i shield because i was pretty much confident that uh, i'll get to another avalanche but if i do not that it's going to be pretty bad but uh, thankfully i was able to get to the avalanche and this will again pressure the large shield or uh, grab the uh, or take down the swampert sorry uh, galarian stun fisk so now in comes uh, swampert and at this point my objective was to farm down but uh, looking like uh, but it looked like that uh, they go for a went for earthquake and it was a cmp tie so not really sure who wins the cmp between swampert and uh, galerian stunfisk i think swampert should have ideally but but it is what it is and they come in with a lolan marowak and now they somehow show up to uh, medicham prob not sure probably they were trying to catch a hydro cannon and it was a power up punch medicham so now i show up into uh, so up into so up into this abamus no because i was really confident that i would be able to get to an energy ball before the medicham will get to a psychic or a para punch or not a para punch but definitely a psychic 
so para punch would not have knocked out so so it was really not to concern and they go for a psychic which was a cmp die and now i can simply farm down this muddy champ and now that i know that there is an alolan marwak in the back i can simply go for uh, i have two hydro cannons ready and uh, the the hydro cannon will be able to knock out the alolan marwak so so yeah i think uh, since the opponent revealed that they have an alolan marwak in the back that really uh, pull uh, that really was their losing condition because uh, if they had not the medicham would have bring the swamp but very low and uh, the uh, that or bombers no had no play against the alol and marwak so uh, picking up a negative lead in the, lead in the form of this uh, altaria and now in comes crafty and uh, This is going to be a pretty neutral matchup unless we take a foul play to the face. Uh, they do not shield the avalanche, which is really good. And at this point, I really want to take the switch advantage because uh, Altaria will be able to block uh, uh, block the swampert. So they, since they did not charge up to a foul play, I do not I did not shield it that. And now this puts us really in a favorable spot because now even if they uh, shield this avalanche, I think we will or they do not. So no point in discussing that. But in comes swampert. So this is uh, still going to be pretty tricky because um, swampert I think can load up on some extra energy if they decide to invest a shield, which they do. And I really cannot support, but they decide to throw anyway. Uh, throw uh, throw right away. So this is really good for us because now I can come in with swampert, which will avoid their altaria and farming some extra energy because uh, the hydro cannon will not uh, take us out whereas uh, whereas uh, all i need to do is burn their last shield so in comes uh, in comes this altaria and altaria will just go down pretty quickly to abomas snow uh, definitely would want to shield the sky attack because it will bring down abomas snow very low if not ko so uh, farming some extra energy and going for uh, weather ball because I, at this point i really did not want to invest another shield in abomas snow so it's better to uh, secure the kill rather than going for uh, going for a aggressive farm down so uh, this will pressure the last shield of the swampert and at this point i what i need to do is i just need to go for a weather ball uh, probably it would it would have been a riskier play so uh, this hydro cannon uh, would have brought down us very uh, very low and probably the opponent swampert would have ended up farming us down so that's why i invested a shield and this weather ball will do massive amount of damage onto swampert and and knock it out even so so yeah ggs Moving on to the next one, and this is my ten thousand battle. So this team I am using Galvanchula, Zumbrella, and Umbreon. So we are in a Galvanchula mirror match, and uh, something very, uh, something very uh, unusual happens here. That you see that it was a CMP tie, and uh, probably my uh, Galvanchula won the CMP there. And uh, now both of us shields uh, their lunge, and again uh, the against Galvanchula the only place you go for back to back lunges. But again uh, this is a, uh, this was again a CMP tie, and their Galvanchula won the CMP here. So at this point I was like uh, quite unsure that what was going on. Probably the uh, they, we had the same attack Galvanchula, and that was that's why it was randomly allocated. And at this point I it was really good that I won the CMP there because if I had not won the cmp it's, it would have ended up really bad for us so now that they are double uh, i think they are triple debuffed so now uh, their lunch will do a uh, less amount of damage and we will be able to take them down with the uh, with the volt switch and in comes shift tree uh, unfortunately we will not be able to get to a lunch but now we can pair the shift tree up against the embryon and this is where i think the having the switch advantage really paid off and that cmp tie really uh, really played a very very crucial role so the last resort will do massive amount of damage whereas uh, this all the shift all all shift tree can do is going for a leaf blade and since embryon is very bulky pokemon it can tank a few hits and at this point i really don't want to reveal that i have an azumarill in the back because that would be really bad so uh, they farm some extra energy and come in with shadow politoed so this is uh, really good because we have some residual energy left on the embryon which is not in a leaf plate range so really they need to go uh, they really need to uh, throw two leaf plates and our azumarill get to avoid that uh, that shift tree in the back and they are going for back to like they are going for weather ball spam probably they are not running earthquake it's a blizzard one um so going for a player of this will do massive amount of damage uh, and but still it's uh, the politoed is in is not in uh, a foul play range so really need to check that out uh, going for a weather ball uh, probably they go for a weather ball but this weather ball will not be able to knock us out i think we are still out of that range so they go for a weather ball and fortunately we are able to throw this player up onto the onto the politoed so the switch i was really uh, 
keeping an eye on the switch timer because I did not want Azumarill to get farmed. So now uh, since we are ahead on energy, we will be able to throw this last resort and take down the shift tree. So so yeah, GG's. So this was uh, this was the win, and now we will see that I I got to the 10,000 battle with a win. So that was pretty exciting, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed watching the battles, and if you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Until next time, peace.